captions in English, please. So this is the first video on chapter 10, and chapter 10 is on energy. So we'll cover sections 10.1 to 10.3 and section 10.5. So what is energy? Matter is one of the two components of our universe. So anything in our universe can be classified as either matter or energy. Energy is the other major component of what's found in the universe. Energy is anything that has the capacity to do work or produce heat. So even though chemistry is the study of matter, uh, matter is dri driven by energy. So we have to uh, talk about energy. So let's uh, watch a YouTube video that will uh, quickly give you an overview of what is energy. Energy is everything. It's everywhere. It's one of the true constants of the universe, because as long as there's been a universe, there's been energy. And while it comes in lots of different forms that can seem different to us, they all amount to the same thing. Energy is the ability to do work. And work is just the act of displacing something by applying force. So say you stomp on a stomp rocket. The force of your foot hitting the pedal is turned into the force of the air, leaving the cannon, sending your rocket sailing. Or maybe you're enjoying a nice patty melt. The energy from that food is broken down for all of the quadrillion of cells that you have to do all of the things that they have to do. Make copies of your DNA, assemble and repair proteins, transport materials from one place to another, make muscle cells contract, you know, all the stuff of being alive. That rocket sailing, your cells toiling away, your phone or computer being on right now to watch me, that's all work being done. And the ability to do these things is inherent in everything around you, even things that look inert, completely lacking in energy, like this log. This log, for example, is chock full of chemical energy because it's made up of combinations of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen formed into lignin, which is the stuff that makes up wood. All of the bonds between all of those atoms and every molecule of lignin contain energy. How do I know? Because if I were to apply enough extra energy, like as heat, to break those bonds, it would release that chemical energy as fire. That chemical energy is also the kind of energy you get from your patty melt. Your body is fueled by the chemical bond energy in sugars and fats and proteins. But this log also contains nuclear energy. Each atom in this wood has a nucleus made of protons and neutrons, and the energy that binds them together is one of the most powerful sources of energy in the universe. If you could split one of the atoms of carbon or hydrogen in this log and rip those protons and neutrons apart, it would release some of that energy. There's so much nuclear energy in each atom that if I could unleash all of it that's in this log, there would be a giant smoldering crater where I'm standing and everyone in the town of Missoula, Montana would be dead. So everything that's made of atoms has nuclear energy locked up in it. But also, it turns out that mass and energy are the same thing. You might have heard of this little equation that a German patent clerk came up with about a hundred years ago. E equals mc squared. And there are so many other kinds of energy that I'd love to get into if we had the time. But even though they may seem different, they can all be used to do work. Whether it's driving a turbine, or moving an engine piston, or allowing the screen on your tablet to glow, or if it's that most mysterious of energies, dark energy, causing the universe to expand more than it seems like it should. But here's the thing to remember. Once the work is done, the energy isn't done. Because energy never goes away. It can never be destroyed, and in the same way it can never be created. It can only be transferred from one source to another, like how the energy in the plants and animals that were in the patty melt were transferred into you. Or it can be transferred from one form into another, like the chemical energy in the wood being transferred to light and heat as fire. You could think of the universe as a constant flow of energy, and we are just little pit stops along the way. Everything your body is doing right now, whether it's your lungs absorbing oxygen, your heart pumping blood, your brain cells firing as you watch me and learn things, all those things are using recycled energy that's been around since the origin of the universe. And simply by being alive, you're releasing that energy back into the environment around you to be used by other things in other ways. So internet, to answer your question, energy is everything. And for those of you who answered our question, So, matter processes energy. That's why uh, chemistry needs to uh, be uh, involved with energy. So, when a piece of matter processes energy, it can give some or all of it to another object. So, there's an illustration here uh, showing billiard balls uh, hitting each other. And so, 
one of the ball, when it hits another, transfers some of its uh, kinetic energy, and the other ball will now have uh, kinetic energy and move. And they can transfer from one ball to another, uh, to yet a new one, etc. Uh, like the water also uh, that falls from a river, you know, in a waterfall, uh, has a lot of potential energy when it's up there. And then when it falls, uh, it uh, increases the kinetic energy. And, you know, this can be used to um, create electricity if you have turbines at the bottom of the fall. Uh, the turbines will be uh, moved. This uh, will, uh, so the turbines have generator and they will create electricity when they are moved and the electricity can be used to do something else. So um, all chemical and physical changes result in the matter changing energy. So uh, there is a lot of uh, change of energy whenever uh, matter change physical state. And when there is a chemical reaction, there's always energy involved. So what is work? Uh, we said energy is the capacity to do work. So what is work? Work is defined as a force acting over a certain distance. And work can be symbolized as W and it's F a force times D a distance. So it's a force acting over a distance. And you can see the little guys here, are, you know, pushing or pulling, they are trying to do work. And for this, they need energy. And whenever we lift something, push something, or otherwise manipulate an object, we are exerting a force. So what is a force? A force is any kind of push or pull exerted on an object. So essentially, it's what makes things move. Um, for example, gravity is a force. It pulls a barbell down when you are trying to lift it up. So um, that's an example of a force. The uh, little drawing about, uh, below here show how, um, you know, a ball that has some uh, kinetic energy because it's moving here to the left. When it will hit the black ball, it will um, uh, have uh, transfer its energy to the black ball. And so that uh, white ball will uh, do work on the black ball and then the black ball now will be uh, moving. So that's what we mean by, you know, energy is the capacity to do work. The white ball had some energy and it allowed uh, the black ball to move. So it did some work there. Electrostatic energy. So in chemistry, we are concerned with other forces like uh, positively charged the nucleus pulling on the negatively charged uh, electron. So those uh, electrostatic uh, attractions between positive and negative charges are uh, a force. Uh, the behavior of matter is driven in large part by energy. It's the flow of energy that determines what chemical changes will take place and the direction of a chemical reaction. So the flow of energy will determine if you have a spontaneous reaction or if it's a reaction that needs uh, you to add some energy to uh, get started. Uh, it, it really influences the way uh, chemical reactions uh, happen. And so like matter, energy is conserved. So there is a law of conservation of energy, just like there is a law of conservation of mass. And it says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. This is a very important concept. The total amount of energy in the universe is constant. There is no process that can increase or decrease that amount. So what happens is that we can transfer energy from one place in the universe to another, and we can change its form. And that's what we are constantly doing. Um, there is a picture here illustrating fireworks. And so when you're doing a firework, you, you have the, um, the shell of the firework. Uh, it's, there's an illustration showing uh, that and it's made of chemicals inside. And then there is everything to uh, get the in ignition started. But um, so it's all about, you know, chemicals um, co contained in that shell that you uh, ignite. 
And so the energy of the motion of the pieces of the shell as it explodes, plus the energy, uh, the heat released because you know it's burning, so it's very hot, plus the sound, you know that it makes a big uh, sounds, and the light, of course, what we really want in that is the light. Um, all, all of these are forms of energy that are actually uh, the sum of them add up to the energy that was contained in the chemicals of the firework shell before it ignited. So all of this came from the chemicals in the firework before you uh, uh, strike uh, the ignition. So that tells you how much energy there is in matter. So there is two types of uh, energy, the kinetic and potential energy. Kinetic energy is energy due to motion of an object. Uh, it depends on the mass of the object and its velocity. So uh, the formula for uh, getting the kinetic energy of an object is one over two times the mass of the object times the velocity squared. So as soon as uh, your object has uh, some motion and then a velocity value, then uh, it possesses kinetic energy. If it doesn't move, uh, you know, the kinetic energy will be just due to the vibrations of the molecules within your um, substance, because matter is uh, always in the movement, you know, when it has a temperature above the absolute zero. Potential energy is energy that is stored. Uh, it is energy due to the position or composition. So here the dam is illustrating, uh, put, uh, you know, what can be thought of as a lot of potential energy in that water that is retained by the dam. Because the water is retained um, in a high uh, position and in a large volume against its will because really water wants to uh, flush down downward due to gravity. And so because you retain it like that with the dam, it possesses a lot of potential energy. And as soon as you release it, the potential energy is transferred into kinetic energy because then the water has uh, gained some speed and uh, performs some works. If you have uh, turbines in there to uh, uh, change the mechanical energy into electrical energy. But potential energy, when we are thinking uh, about chemistry, it's due to the composition. So it's uh, stored in the bonds of molecules. So there are different types of kinetic and potential energy and, and all kinds of energy can be, you know, classified as either kinetic or potential. And for example, electrical energy is a, a form of kinetic energy that is associated to the flow of electrical charges. You know, for electricity to be conducted, you need uh, electrical charges to move around, right? And conduct the electricity. So th there is movement of electrical charges. So it's kinetic energy. Heat or thermal energy is also kinetic energy associated with molecular motion. Uh, as we said, uh, molecules um, vibrate around a fixed position in the solid phase or, you know, move around each other in the liquid phase and then fly away from each other in the gas phase. So all of these motions are um, a thermal energy or, or, or heat. Light or radiant energy. So uh, any kind of light is, uh, uh, you know, officially radiant energy. So that's also kinetic energy associated with the energy transitions in an atom. So it's really at the atomic level that you see the movement. There is movement of electrons, you know, from excited states to ground states. And um, um, this translates into emission of light. So uh, that's also um, kinetic energy due to uh, some movement a nuclear energy uh, is potential energy in the nucleus of atoms. So when we are using, um, you know, atoms and are uh, breaking them down, it releases a lot of energy and we call that uh, nuclear energy. And it's, it's the most, um, you know, abundant, it's 
the largest of all uh, energy. It's uh, very destructive if you release it. So nuclear energy is a potential energy stored in the nucleus of atoms. So that's why it's called nuclear. And then chemical energy is potential energy, but in the attachment of atoms uh, together into uh, molecules or because of their position, uh, you know, uh, due to intramolecular forces, uh, they, they are held into some kind of structure. And if you break down those uh, forces, then you release some energy. So, and whenever you are uh, breaking down a molecule, uh, you release uh, chemical potential energy. So there is a lot of potential energy also in atoms and molecules, in you know, in in, in molecules really, because it's due to the attachment of atoms this time, compared to uh, the nucleus of atoms. So in the case of the nuclear energy. So the nature of energy. Um, so if we look at the drawings here, um, so we have two balls, a ball A and ball B. Ball A is held in place in a, in up a hill. And so that gives it a lot of potential energy. So ball A has a lot of potential energy because it's it wants to go down due to gravity. Uh, however, B here is uh, very stable, has no potential energy nor uh, kin kinetic energy. And so if you release the ball A, it rolls down the hill and will uh, hit ball B with a certain speed. And this will, uh, there will be a transfer of energy. And so B will be pushed up the, the second uh, hill there to the right. And so in the final, uh, uh, at the final time, then A now is at the place of B and B has moved up uh, the intermediate hill. So we can see that A has done some work on B here. The potential en energy lost by A has been converted to frictional heating of the hill as well as transferred to B to increase its potential energy. So A has done some work on B by uh, you know pushing it and moving it up into the intermediate hill. And this way B has increased in potential energy. Uh, but also when A rolls down the hill, there is some frictional heating ha happening uh, due to the fact that, you know, the hill is not uh, completely smooth and uh, there are some frictions and th this will cause a warming up of the hill where the ball has, uh, you know, gone. So, this is heat. So the potential energy uh, lost of by hay, uh, um, you know, has been translated into heat of the hill and then work done on B. The potential energy change of A will always be the same though, um, because when A, you know, starts up the hill like that and finishes at the bottom of the hill, uh, the difference between the final state and the initial state, you know, it's always the same difference in energy. And that corresponds to the potential energy of A that, that it had at the beginning. However, this uh, potential energy uh, can be distributed differently. For example, if the hill is uh, smooth, uh, there will be less frictional heating and more work done on B. But if there is uh, a lot of uh, frictions, uh, you know, if the hill surface is rough, there will be more frictional heating and uh, less work done on B. And it may even not be able to push B up the intermediate hill. So you see that it, the potential energy change of hair can be distributed differently. So the amount of heat and work depends on the conditions of the path that the ball takes. So they are what we say path, pathway dependent, right? It depends if the hill is uh, smooth or rough. And so you will have more or less heat and then more, uh, less, more or less work. However, the changes in energy are not dependent on the path. You know, the change overall, uh, the change of energy for A is not depending on the path. It depends on the initial position and the final position of A. 
So we say that energy is a state function. A state function is a property of a system that does not depend in any way on the system's past or future. It only depends on the present state, so the final state and the initial state, and it doesn't uh, depend on the pathway. So uh, that's a change that is independent on the pathway. And so we've seen that energy is a state function because it only depends on the initial position and final position. However, heat and work are not state function because they definitely depend on the pathway. You know, if the hill is uh, more or less uh, rough, you know, there will be uh, more or less heat and then more or less uh, work. So uh, these then are not state function, heat and work. So energy efficiency, uh, final word on that. So we use energy to accomplish all kinds of processes, right? Uh, to warm your house, uh, electrical energy to run computers, uh, turn on the light, etc. But according to the law of conservation of energy, we don't really use it up. It's only transfer, transfer of energy because energy cannot be created nor destroyed. But if a process was 100% efficient, we could theoretically get all the energy transformed into a useful form, right? If uh, uh, we could, uh, we would use it all always in a useful form. However, uh, we cannot get a 100% efficient process. It does not exist. It's, uh, you know, just theoretical. The energy lost in the process is energy transformed into a form that we cannot use, for example, um, uh, when we turn on the light, there is a heat generated that we don't really use. We only want the light, but we are also um, creating a heat that is uh, lost in the air. Um, the, you know, when there is friction, um, the, that's also... Sorry. So friction is also a form of energy that is lost and that we cannot use. And that will allow to have less, you know, it will uh, take some energy from work that can be done. So most of the energy in the combustion of gasoline, for example, is transformed into sound and heat energy that escapes into the air, right? Some, so some of the energy, uh, uh, you know, is used to push the piston and then uh, make the wheels run, you know, turn. But there is also the sound coming with it. Uh, the the engine becomes very hot, and that's not really necessary, unless it's uh, cold and you want uh, some warm air inside. Uh, so all of this is, you know, uh, unwanted uh, forms of energy. And so some of it uh, remains, and also some of the energy is, remains stored in the products of the reaction, like the carbon dioxide and water that you form when you are burning gasoline, because when gasoline is uh, combusted, uh, it, it uh, uses oxygen from the air and produces carbon dioxide and water. And so those two molecules, carbon dioxide and water, are still molecules with bonds. And so there is still some potential energy stored in carbon dioxide and water that has not been used. So that's why, you know, none, no process can really be 100% efficient. Uh, 